Today on the Av Podcast, Astro World and the aftermath of it all. The concert slash festival by Travis Scott and his partners that ended up in tragedy. All right, so we're here to talk about it all. I'm joined by DJ producer DJ Keo and South Sharaf family member Kevin W. As you break down the festival, discuss who's to blame, what this means for black music festivals, how this affects Travis's career to the point of cancellation, you know, and, and, and a lot more than that. Now, South Sharaf is available wherever you listen to podcasts. Hit the like and favorite buttons, rate, review, and subscribe if you haven't already. And give me that old five-star sweet loving, please, 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 please. And check out SouthSharav.com for my catalog of podcast shows. Once again, that's SouthSharav.com. I- I'm recording this while I'm watching this Shaka Khan, Stephanie Mills versus, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, this is throwing me off. Now, I, I don't, I don't want to speculate. I, I really don't want to speculate, right? But something's clearly going on with Shaka Khan right now. I mean, it's it, it's actually hurting me to watch this, man. She's going viral for all the wrong reasons. I I, I hate to see this, but I I can't stop watching. It's like it's like a train wreck right now. I'm not even joking. I'm not even trying to kick off any jokes or anything like this. Like I seriously, like I want to I want to catch her. I, I want to give her water. I want to give her a hug. Some IV drip. I wanted to sing the rest of the show from her chair. Ah, just. Mm. I'm so nervous watching this right now, man. Oh, oh man. It's the Av Podcast with Cal C on South Shore Ave Radio. They they gotta put shock on some Air Maxes or something. Or some flats. Man, they gonna be talking about her later. Jeez. Welcome to the Av Podcast. Uh, today I'm joined by uh, the DJ and producer, and he's got his own podcast himself on YouTube. Uh, please welcome DJ Keo to the show, and also my South Shariah family member, Kevin W., as well. How you doing today, guys? Doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. That's Hang it in. No problem. No problem. Now, you know, th- this whole thing with Travis Scott and this Astroworld Music Festival, th- this thing is... It has a potential to, to, to get nasty before it gets better. Um, so for those who don't know the story, about two weeks ago or, or just under two weeks ago, uh, Travis Scott held his annual music festival named after his breakout album um, in Houston called Astroworld, the Astroworld Festival. Uh, but this is the first one that he's had post-COVID. Um, he ended up having over 50,000 attendees, which ended up causing overcrowding, people passing out, getting injured from the crush of the crowd. And now there's hundreds of people that have been injured from it. And nine people, as, as we last checked, or as of this recording, has now died from this event. Uh, so the backlash that he's facing is beyond real, uh, from the PR hit to the pending lawsuits. So first off, um, I guess I'll start with you, Kevin. What are your thoughts about all of this, just from the videos that you've seen uh, to the stories and all the backlash? What are, what are, you, what are your initial thoughts on all of this? Um, mismanagement, neglect, and the need to find a fall guy for all of this. And they're going as high as they possibly can. Um, but it's a shame. And I'll, exp- I'll express, uh, condolences to all those family members and all those people that lost loved ones and had loved ones injured because sure. no one wanted to see anything like that happen. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah, I think that, all parties uh, would agree on that. It's a shame when a public gathering ends in this kind of uh, this kind of outcome. But um, I post COVID has been weird. Uh, social gatherings have been weird. Large gatherings of crowds have been weird. Uh, as a whole, um, I think we know, like at the start of basketball and football seasons, people just don't know how to act, or they forgot how to act. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. At football games, at basketball games, um, you know, I don't know much about hockey, but I'm pretty sure anywhere where people had a chance to be out and about, some people act wild a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's just it's just a shame. I, I think part of this too, and I mean, this is such a small thing, but I'm like, man, 
again, Travis Scott is somebody who's outside of – it's safe to say he's outside of our jurisdiction of our ears, basically, right? Like he's not. Yeah, he's, he's very mainstream now. Yeah, he's he's not. But I mean, even for even forget the mainstream. He's like his music isn't for us, right? Oh yeah, it's yeah, for the younger yeah. generation for sure. So I mean, I know how big Travis Scott is. Even with all that said, like I know he's not making the music for for me. I'm not you know downloading his albums on Spotify, but um, fifty thousand people is my god. I, I I didn't know he was that big, like to that degree. I know it's in it's in his hometown and everything, but man, I yeah. sh- wow. Like that number, like if you told me ten thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, I'd be like, shoot, that's huge. Fifty thousand. I'm like, damn. Like, wow. That 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 is a lot of people to try to um corral into one setting. It's a lot of people. But was well, like hear, a, was it like a three day thoughts. festival? Yeah, it was. It was. But I want to hear your thoughts, Lokio. Well, I mean, the thing with this whole stuff is like. A lot of artists are going to feel the repercussions of the fallout from this thing. Like, this is not, it's not limited to just, just this one show. Right. Because, because of COVID, people haven't really gone on tour yet. People haven't really, people have been waiting for like two years to actually go do shows, big shows. Yeah. We had Coachella, um, you know, they, they had all these festivals. They just had the, what's the festival in Chicago? Um, I forgot what it was called. Was it, was it, was it a lot? No, was it Lollapalooza? Yeah, Lollapalooza, Lollapalooza. Chicago. Yeah. yeah, they just had that, and you know, like they're so all of these types of things, people are slowly working their way back to getting to into. Yeah, and this thing is gonna bring that to a halt, like a ton of bricks. Like I, it's kind of reminds me of the clubs in Toronto. Like they had, you know, for people who played like rap or reggae or whatever, like. If there's a couple of shootings and then you couldn't book a club for anything after that. Yeah. And I think that that kind of fallout is going to hit this for rap music in particular, but like pop music still going to be fine. But here's the thing though. These kind of things happen at Coachella and this stuff all the time. No, you're right. But you're right. Cause those festivals are major. Of, those festivals. Yeah. Are like, yeah. 50, yeah. Like you're, 50, you're talking about thousand like, sometimes getting drugged and you know yep. snatched up in the back of a bush or something all kind of craziness happens at coachella and all these festivals tomorrowland all of them all the time but the fallout from this thing is unique because it's a rapper and a rapper that's transcended you know popular culture type thing yeah if you you talk to a regular kaylee or becky on the road you ask me travis scott they're like oh, yeah i know travis scott yeah. That's the world. Yeah. But you, you ask, like, for other artists, they're not going to get that kind of response. Like, he's, he's there. And yeah, he's absolutely there, for sure. And this is dragging him back to Earth in warp speed. So we're, we're going to see what the fallout's going to be. I, saw, I don't know what it is, but I know it's going to be bad, and it's going to hurt everybody's pockets. Is it, yeah, it's interesting you say it's going to hurt. Like you, When you say everybody, do you mean like the black artists or do you mean like just everybody oh, yeah. well, in general? Mostly black artists for sure. Mm-hmm. But and it, for sure, like because Coachella and those kind of things, they keep pushing this stuff back. But yeah. they're going to have to have new – they're going to have to look into new security protocols yeah. or whatever just to make sure this kind of thing doesn't happen. Because you got to think about it. The same people that go to Coachella are the same people that are at Astroworld. You're right. No, you're right. You're it's right. literally the same people. <laughs> yeah. And and that's the thing, right? Because, you know, <laughs> and we've had this discussion about, you know, many of the shows that, you know, we've been blessed to mm-hmm. go to, right? Like most of these shows when you go, especially when it's like a, you know, they say urban, I'm just going to call it black because that's what we that are. Sense. Yeah. <laughs> which is black. Serious. Like, stop. Right. <laughs> but, but, you know, when we go to these, these black shows, especially like hip hop shows and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. and you would say, what do you want to say, Keo? You would, would you say what, like it's seventy percent minimum white? Like, is it like it, depending on the artist? Depending, like it, when I went to Tribe Called Quest, it it was at least eighty yeah, percent white. Yeah, yeah, we talked about this because we were. I think we we're both at that one of the last shows. Yeah, we were show. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, yeah, I would say at least minimum eighty percent. Eighty percent. Look, I remember going to D'Angelo. Right, the last mm-hmm. time D'Angelo came to town, great show, had a great time. 
not only was the show about 70 percent like like white but i remember it was so weird to see it was mostly like people in the early to mid 20s and i mm-hmm. remember it was throwing us off like we like uh, like some of us went and we were like we were considered like one of the old heads at the show <laughs> and I remember yeah. I was like, "What is going on here?" Like I'm like, "Hey, where's all the people that were listening to the, to this man's music back when I was mm-hmm. listening to?" It? Like, why aren't they at this show? And I'm like, so mm-hmm. "Why are all these these younger kids now at this show? Like, what the hell do they know about D'Angelo?" But that's that's <laughs> what it's honestly like going to you know concerts and stuff like that in Toronto. That's a lot of it is represented by that. It's always been like that. Yeah. You know, I remember it was like that when I, w- I saw J. Ru in the um, premiere. Remember they did a show like mm-hmm. a long, a long time ago. We were in high school. Yep. Dude, that show was mostly white kids in there. <laughs> Listen, I went. I went to go see. Oh my gosh, this is man, and this is uh, this is pretty much as underground as you can get. I went mm-hmm. to go see Pharrell Monch in the mid two thousands. It was uh, mm-hmm. it was a few of us that went to go to that. And I would say it was about it was about eighty to eighty five percent white, and yeah. this, and this is when this is when Farrell Monch was coming out with the mic the hardest mixtapes and stuff, mm-hmm. and, and you know you know all your friends listening to it, but when you go to the show, it's like you were barely you're like you were barely represented. It was weird, right? So, the, so the, it's always been like that, though. Yeah, no, you're right. At least in, at least in Toronto, it's yeah. always been like that. No, you're right. You're Not right. just Toronto. Montreal was the same way with like the Fuji's concert. My friends were mm-hmm. telling me like. Mm-hmm. I think you, I think you like Proswell or something even made a comment on stage like, oh, where are we? Like, <laughs> where are people? No, but you, but you're right though because like to circle back to the Scott thing, like it's mm-hmm. a, a lot of that same crowd is is represented at um, the majority of these shows and or festivals, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you no, know, you're you're absolutely right about that. Like for me, it's obviously it is super unfortunate. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I I think this is like. It's like grabbing a Dutch pot and throwing in the the after effects of inadequate security to lend to what Kevin was saying, you know, not understanding or properly being prepared for for that much people to be at the show. Um, yeah. You throw you also throw in the excitement of 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 just being back outside in that fashion. And I, I know Texas has been open for like the longest while, like Florida, yeah. <laughs> but like but like in a festival mode, I think this is like one of the first, if not the first, festival. You know, like a, a concert to this to this degree to be back out there in that fashion, like 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 this is outside outside, post COVID, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think the energy of that, and even like you know, for artists like Travis, who you know they haven't done a show like this in like two years, like or like let's just say for his festival. Plus, it's in his home city. He's back home. You know, it all mixes together in that in that one Dutch spot, and you and it unfortunately ends up with you know ends up being like this which is what you never want as the end result but yeah but it's crazy because like you know it, it, like it's it kind of speaks to when i look at this now like this news now it kind of speaks to where you are in your life it kind of represents where you are in your life because you know 20 plus years ago if i was a fan of travis scott or whoever the rapper was back then you know say jay-z or nas or dmx or whoever it was right 50 cent whoever it was if there was a festival like this, you better believe I was pretty much I was trying to get to the middle of the crowd or or yeah. try, or like if I was in front stage, I'm trying to be right in the middle of the chaos. Right. Yeah. And as you get older, you realize you start to move further and further away from that stage until like you're at the stage now where it's like you don't even want to you don't even want to be near that now. <laughs> right. Yeah. But like I think of like if I was like twenty twenty five years old, would I have been one of those people in the middle of that? And and I can't tell you, I can't tell you no. You know what I mean? I I, I can't honestly tell you no because you know you just want to be in the middle of all that excitement, you know. And and I and I even think of it like now, like you know, like you know, obviously you know before COVID, but like go even going to like a soca fet, you know, when you're like nineteen twenty years old, twenty something years old, you're you're like you're right in the middle of it. You know what I mean? Like getting all of the powder, the water, the you know everything, everything getting thrown at you, and then you know you get to this stage now. You you trying to get bottles in the back? <laughs> yeah, you're over by the wall, by the yeah, bar. Yeah, you, you, you at the <laughs> bar. You trying to get if there's bottle service, you with the bottles in the back <laughs> or at the side. You know what I mean? You're having a great time still, but it's just the the experience is different. You know. So uh-huh. so it's like it's sad to see what what happened with all these with all these kids. But when you think of that melting pot, like I understand too, 
how this could kind of yeah. get out of hand, especially if it's not, especially when the event wasn't properly prepared for all those people to be there. Yeah. Were they, okay, hold on, hold on. Again, I, I just I just have to <coughs> interject, if I may. There, it's very hard to prepare for a swarm of people. Absolutely. Like, to stop that tidal wave of people that, that just decided we're all bum-rushing and there's nothing... There's nothing your twenty dollars an hour can do to stop us from from getting there. Like the the amount of security necessary would have had to be like I don't even know if you could stop something like that from happening at the Super Bowl. You know I what I mean? If everyone can. if if people if people decided, no, we're gonna act up, we're gonna act a fool and we're 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 just taking this. Now, much like what happened on January sixth, where you know who incited you know what, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And said, we're doing this. And then people went and did it. Did, you know, did Travis Scott say, hey, everybody, uh, uh, skip the tickets and, and and acting in an organized fashion, just come to come as close to me as possible. In that case, he might be like, you know, then that might be even more trouble. Well, it's the thing, though, like Travis has had rowdy shows for a long time. He's known for that. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I was on Reddit. And I, I was seeing a bunch of people posting stuff about their experiences at previous shows. And he's been sued for previous shows. Oh, has he? For, yeah. That's why I'm like, yo, he's going down. This is not going to oh. be good for him. Oh, I didn't know he's that. He's been, yeah, there's a, there's a security guard that was talking about his experience. And he was like, the security car was begging them by the stage. Like, the, you know, you got to stop people from getting riled up. Because they're gonna they're gonna pull forward and crush us in the front, mm-hmm. and and see this thing that I don't know for certain because I wasn't there at the show I don't know but this guy is saying he 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 can prove it on on Reddit so yeah. he can take it for what it is, but uh, the dude saying that Travis was telling them like well f the security guard guys up yo enjoy your show do whatever you want and uh, <laughs> the security guards were quitting or whatever at the show. And they they didn't want to get paid. They're they're like screw it. I'll never work for this guy again. Yeah. And like that's the instance. Like I could see it. I could kind of see because like he wasn't. He was kind of hesitant to stop the show. He was just kind of letting it go. And I think that's his problem. Is the second he saw it, he should have been like, turn the lights on. Hey everybody, what's going on here? But he kind of let it go for a little bit, and then he. Like this girl climbed up on where the cameras were. Like, yeah. like you, you can't let it get that far. You got to stop it before that. For people start begging for your for their lives, like that's too far gone for you. Yeah. I, like I don't know if you guys have, have heard the stories. Like if you read some of the stories of, of the, I, of the I saw some of the there. stories. The stories yeah. are crazy. The stories are yeah, the, the stories are harrowing, man. Like it's 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 pretty it's pretty wild. Like actually, mm-hmm. let me let me rephrase that. It is very wild. Some of these stories, right? Some of the stories that are being recanted, like or sorry, re, like retold, you're hearing it. It's, it's like, yo, like I'm in the middle of the crowd, and like, I'm this 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 wave is just crushing my chest. I can't breathe. You know what I mean? And, and mm-hmm. like, you're you're hearing that like from multiple people. Like, like, yo, you're just getting, and we've probably we've you know going to parties and going to different things, different events over the years. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. especially you know when you're going to events that are. You know that are that are black. Sometimes you know when the violence ensues, and that crowd is rushing out. Sometimes you're just you're you're literally just going with the crowd. Like there's you don't you don't have a factor in that decision. You know what I mean? Like when that when there's that much people going in one direction, you have no say in it. You're just you're just you're you're yeah, literally being rolling. carried with it. It's either yeah. go or get trampled on, right? Mm-hmm. In in those situations. So I think unfortunately unfortunately for. All like all of us on this call and others that are listening, and probably in a smaller way. And I'm just talking just for parties and stuff. We've been there. Oh yeah, yeah. we've been there where it's like you're just you're just going up the stairs, down the stairs. You know what I mean? You're just you you just end up in an alleyway outside. You just you know you, or you end up <laughs> you end up by the front door. You're like yo, how the hell did I get here? Yo, I hope my friends are okay. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because you just you just literally got carried out with like the hundreds of people in the crowd that are running in that direction. Yeah. You know and and. And that's the thing, like when when that starts happening, it's like you don't when it's that much people, because I'm like 50,000 people at, at a festival like that. It's not in a stadium where there's seating. You know what I mean? Because if it's not if that's in a football stadium, it's a little different. Right. Because 
the seats are the barrier. You know what I'm saying? Like the the seats, of, the built-in seats in those arenas and those stadiums is that right. barrier. So it doesn't you can't push back, right? You're just in the crowd. You're just enjoying the show, like you know what I mean. But like at, at a at a one of those made up festivals like that, where you're where it's like you're you're making up the venue on the grounds, that's tough to kind of like curtail though that that kind of rush. You know what I mean from the, from like from happening to like what Kevin's saying. Like if people want to storm the stage, it's like there's like what are you gonna do? And if you're a security guard, you're getting paid fifteen bucks, twenty five, thirty thirty it's bucks an it. hour. Yeah, it's not worth it. You just let. I'm like if I'm. And it sounds crazy to say, but realistically, in that situation, it's like, okay, am I, am I really gonna, really gonna fight this hard for twenty five dollars an hour, or and, and risk myself getting hurt in the process, like really hurt, or do I just let this go? Uh-huh. And 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 what person, you know, especially if you if you see what happens, like who's gonna tell you, like, yo, like Keo, that was the wrong move. You should have, you should have, you should have tried to block them, Keo. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> me, yeah, yeah. me and Kevin decided to leave. How about that? You know, it's, it's two versus 400. How about we just leave? Yeah. You know, <laughs> crazy. I think yeah. those security guards felt a lot like how they felt in 300, where you have that, like those hordes <laughs> of people coming at you. And they're not just people. They're like young, drunk, high, intoxicated, inebriated. Uh, you can't tell me nothing, and this is my first concert since, so I have that extra adrenaline. Yep. Pump it. Mm-hmm. Forget it, man. The thing is, yes, I did see, to talk about what Keo touched on, I did see um, that girl that went to the, the cameraman. The cameraman's not going to stop the show. Yeah, yeah. Gonna and, <laughs> nah, he's not doing anything. He's being paid $21 an hour. He's not going <laughs> to. And, and he's safe up the ladder. He's not jumping down. Mm-hmm. But like the police, like there were police officers there on the ground. I saw that footage and they were just feet away and they couldn't even get through to address the issue. Like you got to realize like Madison square garden seats, like 20,000 people. Mm-hmm. Right. And trust me, if everyone decided they want to make it make their way onto the ice, you get it on the ice. It's like college. It's like college when, when like someone hits a game winner or 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 or, or yeah, a high they, high ranking team is, is upset. Yep. Yeah, and pe- you're not stopping that. What do you? I mean, it, it just. It's, I think, no, it, I think part of part of this 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 tragedy addresses the fact that listen, there are not an, it, the fact is there are not enough security guards uh, to stop that that amount of people. You need like one security guard per person, and that person has to be stronger than the person coming at them in order to have adequate security. Because uh-huh. anything else is like two on one, three on one, four on one. How are you going to stop all those people? You're not. So yes, it's just like this could have happened almost anywhere, yeah. almost anywhere, and it's a shame it happens to Travis Scott because apparently Travis Scott's mm-hmm. a big deal. So big of a deal, the guy had what exclusive Jordans. Remember, he had those Jordans that were going yeah. for mad money. You remember, he still yeah. is. Yeah, he had the Happy Meal thing, the, the Travis Happy Meal, whatever. They, that thing sold out everywhere. Wow, what's the difference? It's still McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> is that he had like a special meal thing? Or oh, something like yeah, that. I think I yeah, I think I saw a commercial for that actually. You're right. Yeah, he had like he had like a special. Was it a McRib? Was it was it a McPizza? McRib? It's almost like a like a a number eight or something on the on the Happy Meal or whatever. Not Happy Meal, but like yeah, Yeah, like it it was a special meal that for him. Like there, a lot of people are doing that now, but like he he was one of the first. (sighs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Do people think the try? Okay, all right, okay. But but that's but, the first time I've heard McDonald's selling out of anything. But okay. <laughs> but but to, to but but to Keo's point, it's speaking to how popular his his uh, that he is right now. His key rating is as high, you know, amongst his mm-hmm. generation. Right, that like something something like a put together meal, you know, two burgers and and a large fries with a with a Slurpee is is going to sell out everywhere, <laughs> right? Just because it has his name attached to it. Yeah, the, the menu was a quarter pounder with bacon and fried <laughs> barbecue sauce. He made twenty million dollars off of that deal. Wow, really? You have to be yes, funny. yes, and they were McDonald's selling out all sauce? over the country. Wow! So I I could go to McDonald's and have them customize a burger 
put to put some bacon on it with some barbecue sauce, and I can call it a Travis Scott meal on my own. Yeah, you right? can do that, but like it was a special, it was a special deal, like for a limited time, and he was yeah. there printing money off of this thing. You know, I, just based off this description, I don't think you and I could be friends. In <laughs> fact, you, you know too much about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm reporting the news as is, all right? I'm not pro against this. So I'm just reporting what happened. Okay. He's just the messenger. So, in this. I'm it's just the messenger here. You can't blame his eyes for seeing the commercial, Kevin. It's not his fault. So I remember I back in the day, I was like, what the, what is this? <laughs> what the hell? Okay. As long as we can all admit none of this makes sense. but It doesn't make, make any sense. sense. And this okay. was before he was big, bigger than he is now. This was a couple years ago. Huh. I just have a question. Was he going to be blamed regardless because we need someone to blame when things go when things go bad? Like oh, even if sure. he would have acted quickly, would he still be with because I because he I believe he's refunded money and he's for their offering like uh, therapy to whoever yeah uh, yeah whoever yeah. needs it and whatnot. But and any yeah. tragedy that's going to be you're going you're going to look for someone to blame. Fifty thousand people. Nine. This happened in America. They're litigious over there. <laughs> you slipping a Correct. banana peel, you're suing McDonald's. Like, yo, everybody's gonna sue him. But on top okay. of that, but on top of that too, again, you know, this is this is a couple of the questions I was gonna ask a little bit later in the pod, but it mm-hmm. it you know, his name is attached to it, so it's you know, it's it's his festival. So it his name like he is gonna be you know, I don't know if he's necessarily if he's gonna be the fall guy depending on the situation, but like you know, if there's ever going to be a lawsuit, is you know his name is going to be attached to it because his name is all over the concert. It's Astro World. Yeah, like, they're they're suing Drake too, though. Yeah, which I don't understand. That I don't get. I don't I don't get because that. Because he was there. <laughs> yeah, That's like I'm I'm like you're performing. Like how was like you're a guest on the show. Like he didn't say every like unless he was literally inciting a riot. You know, while that was happening, like, but they said like once he came on stage, like people rushed the stage further. But like. Mm-hmm. How was that his fault? You know, what I mean, like, that would have happened anyway. Yeah, like, that, was... that happens at the Grammys. Like, what are you, what are you doing here? Yeah. Like... The other, the thing, the the biggest thing that hurt Travis was going to Dave and Buster's after. That's the thing. Of, I'm going straight to my lawyers, and we're going to figure out a way to deal. That's all you do. You go home. This guy went to a party after. That's no, no good, man. No. As far as image goes, that's terrible. Yeah, so so it's either he didn't understand the ramifications of it, or it it could come off like he didn't care. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's that's not a that's a terrible like look. People who probably wouldn't have sued are going to be like, "Yo, f that guy." You like, remember a little, little uh, kid kid killed man. You remember? I I don't think he knew what the, at that time, but I don't think he could remember how to that degree. I, I would like to think so, but who knows, right? Like we don't know, you know, we don't know, right? But uh-huh. if you remember, like. That Seinfeld episode when Jake Jarmel was in the hospital and Elaine stopped for Juji fruit. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. On the way to the hospital, that was a bad look. <laughs> um, I think I think it's it's true. I don't know if he should have gone to the hospital but again. What at what point should he have stopped the concert and been like, "Yo, forget it, people are hurt"? Because he did do that at one point, and he did add like there's footage of that. Yeah, he did that. Yeah, yeah. Times. He did that a few times, actually. I think we're gonna, I think we're going to need to see a, lo- a lot more people's footage of like because you know everyone was filming. Right? Uh, everybody was so filming. We're going to need to see like a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I, I well, don't, it, it, it's that's tough. No, it, it it is tough. But I, I I tell you what though, like it it also speaks to. I don't know, man. It, it kind of just puts it in perspective how, how bad people want to go back to how things were, you know? Like, just mm-hmm. the energy for for all of this stuff is even stronger, you know, than it would have been before, for especially for younger people, right? Like, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, we've, everybody's been hurting during this pandemic just for, you know, just for the regular way of living, right? Like, this has affected lives, you know, pretty much forever, you could say, right? Um, yeah. But, you know, but for the younger generation, they felt this in a, you know, they felt this differently than for even for us. Right. So like in normal times, you would be excited and even super excited to go to a show, go to a concert to go see your favorite artist. But now whenever the first of anything, especially if any of these events come back, 
that pent up energy is just it's so different. You know what I mean? It's 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 such, like it, to me that's that's kind of what I see in all of this too. Like it's like would that have happened two years ago? You know what I mean? And maybe it might have. I don't know, right? But the fact that like some of these people, a lot of people haven't been to like anything in almost two years. Like just that general excitement, especially because because like imagine you know, and I'm not doing this to like I'm just you know pointing out a perspective, right? Like pointing out a point of view here, but. But um, Im- imagine if you're 23 years old, right, and COVID hit, and you just lost basically like, by the time stuff opened back up, you're now 25, right? Like the first party, the first soca fet, the first concert, the first anything where there's a large amount of people that you go to, right? Where you know, because you know, and especially at that age, you have a certain sense of invinci- invincibility. At least you feel that way. So imagine yeah. that energy you're now riding with after basically sitting on the sidelines for almost two years. So it's like you can see, you can kind of see where like it can kind of go sideways. You know what I mean? Like if that yeah. makes sense. Like you can kind of see where. Oh, can, I get it. Yeah, like it's. I get it. It's unfortunate. And, and, Don't get me wrong. It's unfortunate. I'm not even saying it's right, but I'm just saying like you could see where it can just, it can go left. And you add the YOLO lifestyle into it, right? Mm-hmm. And social media, and you have to be there, and you have to be like, yeah, I could, I could see all of it. I, I can. Um, I just don't know, like, how much of this is could be blamed on him. Well, I mean, save, look, well, save, in, in, save in, that, in, save that, save that, because I want to come back to that. Um, sure, I'll, I'll come to the next question though. How, and I guess Keo, you could, you could answer this one, or at least to start the answer with this one. But um, how does this impact concerts going forward, especially black festivals or concerts? Well, here's the thing, though. Anytime you do a show that large, you have to get insurance. Yeah. And nobody's going to give this guy insurance after this payout ever again, at least not for the foreseeable future. Right. And so if you're like, oh, I got a rap concert and, you know, an artist like Travis Scott's going to be there, they're going to be like, no, we're not going to do it. So, you know, you're going to have to get insurance from out of the country or like you have to do something different. Or you have to come out of pocket yourself, which is I think is most likely. Which is that's that's taking a big risk. Yeah, like who can afford to put up like twenty million dollars or whatever you're supposed to do for insurance? Yeah. Like who can afford that? This is the fallout is literally gonna be it's gonna be way harder for rap concerts to get insurance to do a show like this. At least at least like, at least once sure. like, like post COVID for the beginning, at least the first couple yeah, of years. Yeah, and for the next I don't think forever, but at least for the next year or two, if you're trying to put on like a like a Rolling Loud or something like that, like a big show somewhere, you're not going to get insurance. No one's going to give it to you. And so that's why I think the fallout from this, people haven't begun to realize what's coming down the pipe. Like, the, you're really going to see it in the next couple of months when other other big shows are supposed to happen. That's when you're going to see it. Like a lot of people are going to have to cancel or they can't explain why certain artists can't come. So, mm. you know, you you could have had this same type of stampede at a Britney Spears concert or, yeah. you know, whoever. But because it happened to this guy, you know, we take the blame for other people like us, whereas it would just be Britney, Britney's fault. Yeah. You know, Backstreet Boys wouldn't have to deal with this. It would just be on Britney. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, this is going to hit a lot of people's pockets for shows. And these guys have been desperate to do shows for the last two years. So this is going to hurt. Um, for, first of all, I don't think it's a, like, I don't think it's like a mortgage or anything like that where, or, or a loan where we just put our, it, it's Travis Scott's name on it. I'm sure there's some sort of holding company or event productions or something like that, that like a shell company that's been set up in order to, protect him right like he would just be like a shareholder or getting dividends off of it or something like that um (laughs) (laughs) no (laughs) no (laughs) really i mean i i you know what yeah it depends it depends i i I, it depends yeah i don't know how he set this thing up hold on 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 we're talking about the man that had a deal with Nike to release limited edition Jordans. And to Keo's own point, 
Mm-hmm. Is a, 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 a number eight Happy Meal at McDonald's, and this man doesn't know about shielding himself in a corporation. Really? Please. He he he's offshore. He's he's organizing festivals. He's offshore. He, he he's Cayman Islands. Has to be. Has to be. I hope. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, you're 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 saying this like it's definite. I hope so. I hope so. Just no- just based on his age and where he's at in his career. I hope so. If this is this J- could if, be Fire Festival Part Two, man, if, for all we know, if, if, <laughs> this, if this right, this if this is Jay Z or something like that, yes. If this is, you know what I mean, some of the bigger artists, yes. Like not the bigger artists, but some of the older, like bigger older artists, mm-hmm. yes. I don't, you know what I mean? Like I don't know. We don't, we don't know the business holdings of Travis Scott. But go on, go on with your oh, point, though. We'll, we'll find out the business dealings of Travis Scott soon enough. We'll yeah. find out all sorts of things. Right. That is. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna pull back the veil on him real soon. Uh, oh, yeah. Just just give Harvey Levin what is it two two weeks, and he'll he'll dig up his blood type too. But um, well, the lot of things are coming. They're already oh, out. Yeah. And yeah. that and that's the thing. It's tough because like historically, you know, it's always been tough for for black for big black music festivals or even concerts to get the proper funding, especially when it comes to hip hop, right? And, I'll, and yeah, I, yeah. I shouldn't say proper funding. I should say the proper insurance. Right. Because like especially hip hop concerts, especially back in the day, they always had this major issue just being insured because most insurance companies were afraid that, you know, what may happen at a show in terms of any. Yeah, they don't want to be you know held liable for any extenuating damages, shootings, injuries at the venue. You know what I mean? From a venue. Right. And even Mm. now that happens. Right. You mean those eighty percent white people that are just busting out Glocks and gas? Hey man. <laughs> hey man, you know, unfortunately, you know, like, the, you know where the hit goes, right? And, and I, I yeah. wonder how much harder it's going to be to insure certain artists, because, and, and, and I mean, you think, you think about this, like, throughout yeah. entertainment, right? Like, once it, once you're an act, an artist, an actor, for example, gets on that list of being uninsurable, and you know, it, yeah. it, it is really hard. Like if damn near impossible to get off that list because it, it, it's funny because I don't know if you remember back in the day, but like I think of Martin, right? When Martin mm-hmm. when Martin Lawrence is going through his his issues and stuff, I remember he was he had like a like a meltdown in the late nineties, early two thousands. I remember I still remember this with um, uh, what was the movie again with with uh, Bad Boys, with yeah, Bad yeah. with Bad Boys Two. Like the reason why some of the reason why it took so long for him to do a part two was because Martin was uninsurable. He was uninsurable. It, it, it like it, it took like a couple years for them to like for, for and, I, and I forgot the type of contract you had to sign, but it was like that was like part of the setup, right? Like that was part of the reason why it took like so long to do a part two it was because mm-hmm. the one of the biggest artists at that time or biggest actors of that time was damn near uninsurable. Like they they didn't want to touch him, right? So you know, and I'm even reading like that insurance companies, for example, like. To, to even bring it back a little more recent, they were like completely pissed off because when Kanye, you know, when he had his meltdown and, and he had to have that tour yeah. canceled because of because of the fact that it was a mental health issue, they had they to pay out. Get a, the yeah, back. they they couldn't he couldn't get the hit for that. They 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 had to pay a lot of money, you know, like pay off a lot of money for that. But for somebody like Kanye, because of his influence outside of music he can bounce back from that where to the point now that if he decides to do a, another tour or concert, like I think yeah, he, he'll be, he able, do it now. yeah, he could, he'll be fine. There's going to be stipulations in place, but, but at the time when he had that breakdown, nobody wanted to do a concert with him. Right. He couldn't get anywhere. Right. But he could do it now. But like I said, there'll be yeah, stipulations yeah. in place, but he'll be able to do it now. But does Travis, yeah. the, does Travis Scott have those same reserves to fall back on? You know what I mean? I like don't know. the answer, I don't. I think we we we. I don't know what that answer is going to be. I don't. I don't think he does. Kylie's going to have to cut a check, man, because I don't know. <laughs> I honestly don't know. I yeah. think he'll be. I think he'll be able to do. He'll be able to perform, but I think Astro World might be on the fritz until somebody else comes in and uh, and backs it. But the fact that he was running this too close to reaping most of the benefits himself. Some sort of intermediary will have to step in and be like, uh, I don't know, McDonald's and Nike present uh, <laughs> Astro World featuring Travis Scott, Happy Meals for twenty six dollars, uh, you know, at, at a tent or something like that. You know what I mean? I think yeah, there I, might be something. 
Sorry? I think the Astro World name is dead, man. I don't think he could ever use this again to do another concert. Because it's going to be associated with this. Because right? people died. If people got hurt, it would have been fine. But because a, like a five year old or not, it's like a nine year old kid died. Yeah. You know, it's a wrap. That name is dead. They can never use that name again. Is it is it fair to ask? <sighs> I think you kind of know where my question is going here, but um, is it fair to ask? Like you know, and I don't want to put this on a parent, but to bring a nine year old to a Travis Scott concert? That's freaking ask insane. the question again, Calvin. Ask the question again. <laughs> You you, know, you 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 can go from there. You can go from there where my direction is with that. Because that's the first thing I thought. I'm like, what do you mean a nine year old, a ten year old got hurt? I'm like, why would a ten year old be at a Travis Scott concert? Like getting his happy meal. I, I, I guess, but I'm like, but I'm looking at it from the perspective. Of, I'm like, yo, forget the fact that like you know, because he's ten years old. You know, you could be listening to the edited version or who knows, unedited version of whatever his music is. I get that part. You know what I mean? I, I like whether it's right or wrong. I understand. Like you know, most people now they're, they're not looking for the clean cuts of music. So I understand if their their kid might be listening to Travis Scott songs. I totally get that part. But mm -hmm. you know, we've been to concerts. We've been to shows. The type of stuff that happens at these type of shows, festivals, is not meant for kids. How do you get in there? <laughs> yeah, that's. I'm like, was this? I don't think this was an all ages thing, was it? I don't know. But I'm like, but I wouldn't like. Again, I, I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to heap on the. I'm. I, I'm not trying to heap on the parent. I'm really not. But I'm yeah. Just, but, yeah. I'm, but I'm just like just seeing that. I'm like that's the. I mean, again, I'm like, why would a ten year old be at this? It's crazy. But how how did this kid get in there? Yeah. Get the ticket. That's usually something they're like, oh, you can't come in. Ask the question. Sorry. Keep asking the question. No, it's just, it's just to me that's just I look at that. I'm just like it's wild. Like that, that to me is just, it's just wild. Like I said, again, as a parent, I, I feel for that parent. Absolutely. Cause they lost their child at a concert. Yeah. But I'm like, but again, I'm like, <sighs> Travis Scott though. Like, and, I, and I'm saying Travis Scott, I, I would say that for basically most, most concerts or most festivals, not say concerts because most festivals like of the, of that nature. I'm like, I would not bring a, I just, I would be, Hell no. yeah, just, Hell no. <sighs> Ten years old? Hell no! What? I don't even think I would let my kids listen to this music right now, let alone go to a concert. Yeah, yeah. Is it the parents' fault, or is it the mob's? Is is it the parents' fault? Is it Travis Scott's fault, or is it the mob's fault? That That's trampled the child? Though. It, it, I don't think you could pinpoint exactly whose fault it is. Yeah. Because like the mob thing is a snowball. Like once something, once once somebody pushes in the back. It's gonna turn into a, a brawl by the front time it gets to the front. Yeah. Like that's just the nature of these kind of events with this many people. But at the same time, I I wouldn't let any kids to to the concert like that. I would have been eighteen and over at least, or at least sixteen and over. Yeah. I heard there was a fourteen year old or something like that that got hurt too. Like a bunch of minors were a in there. A bunch of people yeah. got hurt. Yeah. It's a lot. Of, it's hundreds of people got hurt. But I think it's what ten people died. But How can you leave hundreds aren't of they people selling alcohol there? What? Aren't they, aren't they selling alcohol at the venue? Are you supposed are you allowed to have children around where there's you know what? It's Texas. A lot of things. You no, know, it's make a it's a outdoor festival, so I think like if people had alcohol, like maybe they bought it somewhere else and brought it there. Or the, or a certain section selling. you can only drink it in certain parts, right? Yeah, like, yeah. That would make more sense. They yeah. wouldn't. There wouldn't be a free for all like that if yeah, it was a concert. Yeah, like usually those festivals is usually like a section where you can, you can, yeah. you, you can consume alcohol, but you can only consume it in that section. Like you can't bring it back with you in in the main public, right? Yeah, like, I I want to ask a question. It's kind of off topic, but like, have you guys heard about people like? Stabbing people with like hypodermic needles or something. Yeah, at this uh, but I, I, I the only is reason that, I, the only is reason that an urban tale or I, is that actually happening? Well, that's what I was. I'm because at first you were hearing that, but then I did hear that they don't think that was true. So I, you know what I mean. So I don't know. That's the only reason why I didn't mention that honestly, because I'm like I don't know oh. if that's actually a hundred percent true, right? But uh, yeah, no, I was hearing news reported. And I was like, oh damn, yeah, I like, no, that's no, crazy. I, I, I totally agree. I heard it on the news too, CTV. <laughs> yeah, there was a police officer that that, that came on. Uh, I, I think it was a brother in a green 
in a green uh, police outfit or something like that. And he was saying that we are, we have reports of this and whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's where a lot of people ran with it. But again, you now, again, because we live in this era, this age of like truth, 50, you know, 45% truth, 40% lies, 5%, no, oh, sorry, 10% reality. You know what I mean? And, 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 and the gray zone in between. It's hard to tell what's, what, what's really true. Yeah, but like and that, then who, that's and who's, crazy. Account, who's, who's account are you taking? Who's account are you taking? The people that are in the, in the festival? It's like, it's like breaking up a drunk fight at 3, 3.30 in the morning. Well, All I'm right. saying like that's crazy on the police's report, part to report or to put information like that out there. Yeah. That's yeah. unconfirmed. It's, that's it's insane. Not, it's not, it's not unconf- yeah, it's unconfirmed. I agree. I agree. Because once, once I heard it was like they're not sure if that was show. was like, so why would the police chief come out on a press conference and mention that then too? Yeah. Like. I thought that That's was wild. wild. Too. Yeah, for sure. I've never seen anything like because usually it's like, oh, we heard reports or you know we're looking into it. Well, come out and say it. That's crazy to me. Everything about this is crazy. It's like a failure in all levels. <laughs> yeah, and and this and this is kind of why I wanted to talk about this too because this is none of us are in Travis Scott's demographic, obviously, no. right? Like none of us are, are banging his albums out like that. There might be some people are in our generation that do, but it's not the music isn't meant for us, right? Mm-hmm. But like, but this story is so crazy and wild, and just the fallout from this is so wild. Like, how do you, you know, again, like this is kind of why I want to talk about it because I'm like, you could you can see the sides of where this can all go sideways. You know what I mean? Like you can see where, yeah. like I said, the, the, my analogy before of like going in, in this big Dutch melting pot, like. You can see where this can go. Like you can see how this can get out of hand, right? Uh-huh. Like when you throw everything together, like it, you could see how this can get out of hand. Now, I guess this is one of like my final questions, and 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 I guess we can um, you know lay out some of the topics we were to talk about before. But um, what do you think this means for Travis Scott? Like, do you think this gets him canceled? I don't know. A lot of people are. I've seen a lot of people talking about all oh, he's demonic and all this other stuff, like. But like those type of people, they they can't cancel anything, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't rule that out. But he has to take time off. He can't he can't do anything for a minute. Mm-hmm. Like he's got to take a break. I don't I don't think for certain that this would put the the nail into the coffin for him that he can't do anything ever again. Right. But for sure, he's got to go on vacation for a little bit. Yeah. I think he needs to take a Chris Brown hiatus. Um, <laughs> That's perfect analogy too. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah, he needs to. He needs to take a Chris Brown hiatus. Have some people miss him. Go on whatever ABC, NBC, CBS. But uh, since he's black, he'll probably have to sit down with Oprah or Gail, and you know, in a couple of weeks, break his silence in a one-hour, you know, in a one-hour special, and. Um, you know, be remorseful. Yeah, be contrite, and, uh, mm-hmm. and then come back and bang out some hits right before the summertime, and then like Travis Scott's back, and then right. He has to put yeah. out the album of the century, man. It's got to be the greatest thing of all time. No, he doesn't. No one has to put out great anything anymore. Well, he I mean, like he just has to show up on a track. Chris because Brown he, came back with hit records, so it was like, ah, I don't. Oh. You know what? That's all right. Like that, that's the attitude people have. Like I don't like Chris. Ah, you know what? That record bangs. He has to come out with something like that. Where I, I you know what, Keo is a record. Keo, you know what? It's it's unfortunate because of what happened with Chris Brown during that period mm-hmm. of time. But you're you're right. I think it's sad to say, but I think most like the most of the public, we you know like, and it speaks to like the social media and, you know generation that we're living in now, era that we're living in now, where mm-hmm. like. You know, you put out great content, your troubles go away. Like it's 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 sad, but it's it's kind of where we are. Cause I remember I I remember doing doing this podcast like maybe mm-hmm. well, close to three years ago. Now this is when the whole surviving R. Kelly thing happened, right? And yeah, and I remember like I you know this is something we we've, we've I know we me and you we've talked about this in like offline many times in the past. But during that pod, I remember mentioning like. The, the crazy thing about the R. Kelly stuff was like, you know, when all that stuff was going down, Step in the Name of Love and the Chocolate Factory album had him to the <laughs> point where people were like, yeah, but did he, did he really do it? Did he, did he, I don't know if he really did it. And it was all because we loved 
Step in the Name of Love. That was like Step in the Name of Love was probably as when you say you need a, a home run in the ninth inning, bottom of the ninth, you know, yeah. um, you know, the, the the pitch count is against you. Like that was he walked like, off. Like that, yeah. yeah that, 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 that was run, that was an upper deck grand slam home run. Yeah, that was Joe Carter. That was Joe Carter. Yeah. Yes, that that was Game Six. Joe Carter, for real. Like that was Game yeah. Six. Joe Carter, right? Mm-hmm. And and I I kind of agree. Like I think like his next set of stuff that he's gonna have to put out if he, if he wants to continue moving on that trajectory that he was trying to head to. Yeah, like the next couple of stuff that he has to hit has to be like, like it's got to be out of the park, out of the park. But the thing though, like for Chris Brown, he started doing dance music with all these dance producers, and he made some records for them. And all the white girls with the Starbucks was like, "Yeah, Chris Brown's all right now." David, yeah. that's literally what saved. Right? That's what saved Chris Brown is the dance music. It's not him doing Transformer or any other stuff. This guy made dance songs with yeah. big producers, and they gave him the cosign. And they were, and it was they were monsters. At the yes, time. they were monsters. They were monsters. And, and we and we took the Pied Piper and all the remixes, and we even we even ignored the fact that he did a song with B Two K, which would have put him <laughs> back in the same market of underage black girls. And we're like, yeah, but the flute though. And then we just pretended like that. You know, yeah. There's an episode of the Boondocks that covered House of Society, yeah, yeah, with, yeah. With Kelly, right? Yeah. That. Yeah. So prophetic, I'm pretty sure. Um, I think he'll be, he'll have the stink on him for like a couple years, but he'll be back. There's too much money to be made off of him, and he's, he's too young. Two, two Madison Square Gardens plus change mm-hmm. packed up. And honestly, um, I don't think that all the people there cared as much as much as they cared to see the show about what happened. Yeah, a lot of people were like, "Keep the show going." Yeah, which is crazy because people, people, when you hear some of the stories, it's like, "Yo, I mean, some of those people were already dead while he was still performing." Yeah, you know what I mean, which is like that, and that I think that part of it when you like you said when you read some of the stories, like you Google and you read some of the stories on uh, like the you know the the retelling of some of these stories, it's like, yeah, I, I agree. He's gonna have to take a break for a while. Like, like to me, I don't think his fans leave him. Like, this is super tragic beyond belief, you know. But his fan base at this at this point is his fan base. Like, I don't think they're leaving him. But I think the days of him, you know, crossing over and all that stuff, I think is going to be paused for a while at least. If not, like, oh, for if, sure. if it's not forever, then it's going to be paused for a while. Because, look, so – and the reason why I ask this question is because you're already seeing some of the fallout. Like, so far, um, you know, at a SZA concert, you know the DJ was playing his his music and he and it was getting People booed. Him. People were booing it so that so that the DJ had to pull his music. Um, Nike has delayed the release of his Cactus Jack um, Air Air Max ones release that was supposed to be I think for December sixteenth. That's been pushed back mm-hmm. to further notice. Um, he's already been taken off the list to perform at a day in Vegas concert or festival. Um, so it's it's pretty yeah. remarkable how fast this is already turning. You hey, know? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever seen anybody boo R. Kelly or Chris Brown's music? No, that that's the crazy. No. no, that's the crazy thing. And yeah, nope. that's the, that's the crazy thing. We didn't. <laughs> Not during their their biggest trials and tribulations. I've never seen anybody boo them. Yeah. Not once. Not once. I do have to interject this though, if I may. Mm-hmm. Our, what R. Kelly did, he did directly to his victims. What Chris we, Brown did, yeah, he did we, directly to his victim. Yeah, what yeah, happened at the Travis different. Scott concert, uh, it's not like Travis Scott stomped these people out or, you know what I mean? He didn't do that. Right. And it it is a little bit different. It's a shame, but it is associated. It's, it's, it's guilty by association. Like, I just wonder, what if it was just a concert that was not organized by him and he just happened to be on stage at the time like Drake? Well, would we be having the name of the, the company that, you know, that failed to provide the security? And does the security company harbor any of the, like, was he responsible for security? Well, for, yeah. start, for starters, let me say, you know, I'm the one that brought his name into this. Let me let me take R. Kelly's name out of this conversation. This is this is let's just let's just take it out of the conversation. Oh, because you want to travel to Chicago at some point in the future. Okay, go ahead. 
<laughs> yes. Oh. I want to deep this pizza just like everybody else. Um, yeah. So yeah, let's let's leave that part of the conversation. Let, you know, let's, okay, not, right, let's, right, let's, right. let's 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 not compare the two of them because they're they're in a whole. To to your point, Kevin, they're in a whole, two totally different spectrums. Let's let's leave that out. That's my fault for bringing keep, it in. Keep but, digging, uh, Calvin. Keep digging. But yeah, but but but, <laughs> but but in all seriousness, it was just to just to prove that kind of point. And I guess it's the, it's the question I, to ask both of you guys: like, how much is he to blame for this? And and, I, and I'm asking, knowing that his name is all over this event. But I ask this because I have to imagine when you're on stage, like between the pyrotechnics, the lighting, the smoke, you know what I mean, like. Everything that's happening, it's, it's hard to exactly see what's happening on stage, especially outdoors at night. You and can't I, see nothing. And, and, I, and I'm not making any excuses for him, but it's but it's like it's one of those things where you can see everything and also nothing. You know what I mean? Like especially at at that point. So it's like it's like to me, it's just it's crazy, but it's not as cut and dry as it seems. You know, especially when you see the dangers, of what's happening. You know, uh, around fifty thousand fifty thousand people storming the stage, or close to that, or whatever the number. Even if it's twenty thousand people storming the stage, like it's it's not as cut and dry as saying like it's this guy's fault for. You know what I mean? Like, even if you're hyping up the crowd, you're not. You know, it, you we, again, we've all been to these type of festivals. You know, like hip hop or whatever it is. Like you've been to these type of festivals. You know, an artist hyping up the crowd is like, per, you know, part of course, right? Yeah. So that's what I mean. It's 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 hard. Like, and again, I like I don't know who's to blame for this, but is he to blame for this? Like, I don't know. It's it's hard to say, right? You want to go first, or you want me to go? <laughs> um, <laughs> I just realized I can't go to Chicago anymore, and I can't go to Virginia. <laughs> Not like I was going to go to Virginia, uh, where where Chris Brown's from, but that's for the courts to decide. Yeah. But I think right now, um, based off of history and everything that we know already, the court of public opinion has already condemned him to death. For now. Yeah. Until we, until, until, un, until we choose to resurrect them. So that's exactly what we love to do with celebrity. We love to build them up, tear them down, and then celebrate like, we were always down for you, man, when they come, when they make a successful return. We just trashed Kanye forever. <laughs> we, people trash Britney. People trash, like, you know, you name it, it's happened. It's always, it's always been that way. Um, we do it in sports. We do it with entertainment. We do it with celebrity period we do what we do we do it with each other part yeah. of human nature like okay you have a misstep you were balling pay the price well i, I think it. people in this today's culture they like seeing people fail like the you know the internet piles on like when um travis did that that video and he's talking about how how sorry he felt like people were mocking it yeah and you know people were doing tiktoks of like oh this is what happens when you come home for dinner or whatever they show Travis like, yo, like there's no yeah, mercy no. anymore with the internet. You're the right. internet's ruthless. You're right, especially if there's clicks and likes to be had, right? Yeah, oh, the internet's ruthless at this point. So, but the internet will turn on a dime if you do something that they're that's you know they're happy with, or you know come out with a new song, or whatever. Like it, they'll just turn on a dime. Like there's no there's no loyalty to the mob if you will. Mm. So I don't think that like he's finished or whatever. And I don't think that you could even give him the full blame for what happened. Cause you know, I've been, I've stood on top of a stage before with the lights on. You can't see nothing. Yeah. You cannot see anything. I agree with you. It, it everybody him, looks like dots him. and dots in the heads. That's all you can kind of see or hats. If you're lucky. And you can only see, and you can only see so far. Cause yeah. yeah. Keo. They, 50, thousand Keo, people. think think about this we mm -hmm. you, you've been and, and i can even say even myself you you've been on i've been on the stage or been on the stage at a party yeah and you can't see what's what's going on nothing. in the back of the party or like even by anything. the middle of the crowd other than the first section in the front you can't see what's going on and i like, always say yo, know, i was at a party and the security guard assaulted a girl like actually he grinded on her and <laughs> It happened a good 15 feet away from me, and I couldn't see it. Really? 
Yeah, so like, yo, there's a huge investigation after, and they're asking what happened. And I'm taking statements and stuff, and I was like, yo, the the lights are blinding, coming up towards yeah. me. I can't see anything from my perspective because the, the lights are off in the audience, and then their lights are on me, and lights are, you know, they're flashing. Yeah, yeah. It is if you know you have treat you have treated as the in between the intervals, the lights popping on and off. Then you can kind of you make out stuff, but it seems like it's freeze framed. Right. So it, it's not the same because people look at it, they can see you clearly, but they can't see your perspective looking into the audience. Yeah. And from concerts I've been at, and from just DJing in general, it is difficult to see past a couple feet in the audience. So I would I couldn't blame him for that at all to be like, oh, he should have done this first or whatever. Like it's. It's hard when that's in your perspective. Like it, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's difficult to kind of do that. People expect a lot from performers because the music's loud and it's it's, it's difficult. And, and that's it's the really thing because you have the monitors, the, the speakers on the stage too. It's not it's yeah, not just the speakers. They're blaring in, the in your direction. Yeah, it's it's facing your direction, so you can hear the music. You can hear all all the stuff, right? Your cues, everything. So. Yeah, like you you, the, can, the you can't issue, necessarily hear what's what's going. So so people are screaming that like, you know, yeah, like that people are happening. getting you, hurt. You like, may not hear it. Yeah, but like the thing is though, the problem for him is the visual of a girl pleading for people's lives. Right, you can't get past that. And and is and is that person the same person who, um, where I think didn't she pass out and then she was or or was that somebody else who? I think that was somebody out. else. Okay, because I'm was, just saying, like, yeah. for for middle America or just people who are casually not paying attention, once they see the image of this girl crying, bawling her eyes out, begging them to stop the concert, and traffic still going on, you can't beat that. Doesn't uh, matter uh, the, uh, the information uh, on the ground. Uh, uh, uh. No, 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 not the girl. Yeah, the girl. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Let let let's be real. If if Taisha was running on stage, the- yeah, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't hold the same weight. For okay. it, that's real talk. I'll give you that. That's real talk. Mm-hmm. There were, there was a white girl bawling her eyes out, begging them to stop the concert. You cannot. You're never gonna win that battle. I don't care who you are, what kind of happy meal deal you had. There's nothing. You're never gonna beat that battle. The, yeah. the visuals of that is devastating for public perception. There are enough. Yeah. There are enough people bitter from a 2020 election. They're angry, waiting for someone to blame, and mm-hmm. they just get. I they get this visual of Travis Scott, his hair, his stature, and him being it being ignorant to the plight of <clears throat> that girl, and they're like, "Yo, get the pickup trucks." We gotta shut him down. Yo, and that, just, the lawsuits that, that are coming towards this guy are, are wild. Yeah. <laughs> They're and listen, are wild. The number and and to to be fair, there are some people that I I one hundred percent believe were mm-hmm. caught in, trampled and and attacked and whatever. But you're gonna have enough people that were just there by proxy. And they're gonna show up with Bobby the Brain Heenan neck braces and and crutches <laughs> and whatever, right? Stop it. <laughs> they're gonna show up out what fifty thousand of them suffered yes. emotional yes. trauma. The guy, the guy that sh- the the officer that shoved Masai Ujiri at the Golden State game, he's gonna mm-hmm. say that he was in attendance and he suffered trauma. <laughs> he needs another year off of work with pay. You know, all that. Everybody is gonna show up. Everyone, yeah, and, yeah, and, and, and to the, and to cite, and you gotta have to sift through all of that, right? Like that's that's the tough part, and I mean, and, and that that stuff is gonna that that stuff that stuff's gonna take years, to be honest with you. Like now, thinking of it from that perspective, especially the insurance, oh, this is going, the this is going on for gonna, a minute. Yeah, it's gonna this, this is gonna take a few. This is gonna, this is gonna take a couple of years. I think minimum I three years before this even remotely starts to get settled. Yeah. I kid you not. There there may not have been enough security in Texas. Mm-hmm. Or in the states, but there will be more than enough lawyers in yes. the states to take these cases. There'll be a lawyer for every person in attendance. There won't be enough security for them. There, there's a class action lawsuit already, and there's hundreds of lawsuits already right now. And, that, and they're hitting everybody: the venue, the security, mm-hmm. Drake, 
to any artist yeah. that was in the green room, they're hitting everybody. Live Nation, yep. All yeah, those. Live Nation. That's a that's another aspect of this that we haven't really touched on. Live Nation has gobbled up all of the concert stuff. They they pretty much control all of the shows for North America at this point. Yeah. And they have to deal with this fallout too because they're getting, they're in the lawsuits. Yeah, for sure. So sure. yeah, so I'm saying like this is gonna be a bloodbath for a lot of people's pockets yeah. in the next next little while. And that's the thing, like I think one of you guys mentioned this before, but he's agreed to pay for all the funeral costs for the victims as well as all the counseling <laughs> services for anyone who's suffering from mental health. And 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 to his you know, it looks yeah, like right, he's, right, least, though. Yeah, and it looks like he's genuinely affected by this. And I think most artists, you know, would be affected by this because you don't want to hear people dying at your event. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's that's pretty traumatic. Like I, you know, prior to COVID, like you know, we're like I was doing parties and stuff like every mm-hmm. you know every few months or every caravan or whatever it is, right? And if somebody is that happened at your event, like that that's that's it's pretty traumatizing. You know what I mean? I know yeah. people that's promoters and different people that's happened to for at their events, and it's like it's traumatic. Like you, that sits with you, right? You carry that with you. Right. So I don't care how big you are, like most artists or, or promoters or whatever it is, they don't want to hear people losing their lives at their event. You know what I mean? So it's it's going to it's going to cost them for a while. Like, I don't I don't think it's going to be forever, but like and he's a major artist for this next generation. So I can't see him like he's so big. I, I can't see him um, like going down forever unless he does something else. It, it's going to be he's going to be radioactive for a little while, which is, you know, it's unfortunate. But I mean, it's it, you kind of understand, too. You know what I mean? Like, it's it is what it is. And like to go back to what, you know, you're saying about the lighting stuff like, you know, and you're you're Keo, you're talking about yourself on, on, on you know, with, with a DJ set and the lighting and all that stuff. Right. Like, yeah, you have you seen the set for Astro World? Like, it's, yeah, like it's, a, it's, nuts. it's nuts. Like the lighting in that is nuts. You know, so yeah, I don't know, man. Like it's it's this is it's gonna take a couple of years to sift through the sift through the rubble of this. Like I'm telling you, is this this is not like this ain't going away anytime soon. And again, I ask, like, does he have the reserves to like you know if the insurance companies only pay out to a certain point, does he have it in the reserves to to pay? You know what I mean? Like to pay the rest of this off. Like I don't know if he does. Like he's not. He's not Kanye. He's gonna have to tap into the Jenners, man. Jenners gonna have to give some money, man. There's no Mm. way. Yeah. You know the Jenners are you are normally used to sticking by their men in times of crisis, like Lamar Odom and Kanye West. Mental. Oh wait. Yeah. (laughs) Um. I'm sure. I'm sure she's down. I mean, she she looks like she'll cut a check. I don't know how much she needs because he's a billionaire. So I mean, she can get a. There's a couple million hold hold you down a little bit, so she's a it's possible. She's a billionaire. Yeah. Okay. Just remember that she did. She didn't tell them to hold an <laughs> astral concert. She didn't tell. She told them to hire more security. Uh, <laughs> you know. We know that's going to play out. You will. So. We'll see how this goes, man. It's good. It's not going to be good for him. Whatever the fallout is, it won't be good for him. No, it's it's, it's not. It, re- it really is it. So, just a last tidbit, just to, just because I'm wondering if you guys are thinking the same thing. Because uh, I told, I was telling Calvin before, do you guys want to be a black celebrity anymore, or are you just like, <laughs> oh, I'm good. <laughs> ah, we're in the crosshairs, man. I don't, I don't, I would like to be famous, but not that famous. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I, that's the I, thing. You I, want to be at a certain level. You want to be at a certain level. I don't know if you definitely want to be at a certain level for sure. But I don't know if I want to be at the paparazzi every time I step out of my every time I step out of the grocery store. I come out of yeah, Sobeys. Yeah. There's there's 15 yeah, cameras off. Right? Nah, nah, nah. That that life I want no part of at all. Yeah, yeah. At yes, all. I don't think I, I don't think I ever did. Even even when you're young and you're like you had all these big humongous dreams. Like you know, I'm not, having, I'm having paparazzi follow me was not was not was never one of those. Never fell into one of those dreams. So, I've, I've never had that dream ever. No, ever. no not, not not ever. I I, I want I want to be ghost. I want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want I want to be like James St. Patrick. I want to be ghost. I, yeah, I, 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 uh, I want to blink. I want actually. I want to be like Batman. You know when he turned mm-hmm. around and it's like, 
wait, where do you go? Wasn't Batman just here? Like, I want to be like that, that kind of celebrity. <laughs> it's like, you, but yeah. I swore he was in front of Sobeys, wasn't he? Funny thing is, with, with, with black celebrities, it's almost like built, there's a contract put before you, and it signs, and you're guaranteed to be famous. Then you sign it. And then, like, a couple years later, you've revised the contract. You realize that the invisible ink wore off. And the letters I N are put right in front of famous, mm-hmm. and you become infamous because there's always something to take you down. There's Do, always okay. like at this point, this can't be accidental. Like this is this is ridiculous. This is I, ridiculous. I really want to know exactly how this thing got started. Like what happened? What started the whole? commotion that made everybody charge yeah i don't know because like i said when you see the the footage of the the vip section that got crashed and i mean the police had to come with the horses to basically kind of stop it but i mean mm-hmm. just just in that short little footage you're seeing like people were getting trampled in that section right like the the, yeah. the people that were on the bottom of that pile like it was like i'm like oh my god yo that's scary because they were it's bad enough that you're at the bottom of the pile, but you're at the bottom of the pile on on a gated and and a barrier and the ground, like yeah. that 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 has to be such a terrible feeling to be at the bottom of that. What is like ten to fifteen people, you know, or or a huge crowd that's on top of your back, like yes, your body. You cannot move. You yeah. just gotta take that L. Yeah, but I mean, but from that, it's like, do you pass out? Do you get broken ribs? Like that. That's that. That's scary. That's scary. Yeah, that. That is a sad example. And again, I am expressing, um, you know, there, there is remorse. I do feel sorry for these families. Mm-hmm. But that was the crowd exercising social Darwinism. And it was survival of the fittest. And if it meant that someone had to get stepped on, multiple people stepped on one person, on the same person, in order to get closer to the stage. The crowd is to blame, not Travis Scott. Let me ask you something, because you, you guys have all been at, you know, sketchy parties. I've been at house parties where there's been shootings, and even at a, at a club by York University, I had to hop over the bar, man. This guy was blasting in there. Um, like, have you, you've been that experience before where, like, something wild happened and everyone's just running or everyone's dodging? Like, there's nothing you can do. Me? Never. Never been to anything like that. No. <laughs> Kino, are you crazy? That has never happened to me ever in my life. Every party I've been to has just been rose petals and the like. Like it's never, it's never happened before. Dude, that's I, what you gotta tell I, the kids, man. I, I've been safe my entire I've life. Been right? my, I've, I've, I never, this has never happened. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know what you're talking about right now. Okay, I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, no, but what? <laughs> but I, I'll say I'll say this, man, and it's it's sad. You know, I've said this on previous podcasts over the years. I'll say it again. Mm. You know, if you if you love your black people and you've partied with your black people, and you and we all have, you know what I mean? We, yeah. we all have. There has always been a point in time in your life where you have to put on the air maxes and run for your life. Yes. Unfortunately, this has happened multiple times. Mul- like it's you know it's it's to the point where like it ha- like to the point where, and this is again this is this is I like it's sad to say, but it, it's to the point where mm-hmm. if you're, I'll put it this way: if you basically kind of know what to do when it happens, yeah. That's how many times you've been through it? Like it like it's not not the fact that it doesn't scare you because it does. You do have a sense of fear. But you've been through it enough times that you know what to do in that situation, which is crazy. Yeah. I, I had to talk with some of my friends. I'm like, why are we doing this? Like, yeah. Why we do, you, do you remember that, that abandoned house that was in Markham that used to do all the house parties? Uh, the there was this abandoned bell. house. It rings a bell. It rings a bell. And uh, it was up by Steel's. And these guys used to bring these speakers I and throw reggae bash parties. Was that one? One was that? Was that the late nineties, like early? Yeah, yeah. I think I remember that. I think I yeah. remember that. And like, I used to go to that thing all the time. And then there's something crazy would happen. I'm looking at my friends like, "Why are we doing this?" And then next week though, you want to go out? Like, yeah, all right. This girl's out there. Like, all right. Like, that was the only thing. That, that was the only reason why we went to these things is because girls were there. Yep. And. It, <laughs> Our, our libido was like he was beating us over the head. Like we couldn't think straight. Like this is like yeah, danger is fine. Let's go to this club. It's fine. 
we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it again. And and on yeah, top, we'll do it again. And, and on top of that, like, I mean, again, Young Street, Caravan of Friday, yeah, Caravan how, with how, the with the riots with the horses. How much how much times have we run that up and down Young Street until finally <laughs> you're like, why do we keep doing this? Listen, I I love the vibe of Young Street, but okay, like I, I've run my Ooh. last race in this situation. I I yeah. run my last tough mother in this situation. You know what I mean? Like. It's, there was a point where I just stopped doing Friday night. I was like, yeah, I don't care anymore. Like, I just, I don't care. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. There's the cars and everyone's just running. There's a moment every night, like that, that time we ran to Marcus Canby <laughs> up on King Street. There was a moment every night on Caravana where you had to run. Regardless, a hundred percent. And you know what? Every night. And you know what? I won't even take it to Caravana. Let's, let's not even do that. Mm-hmm. Let's let's take it to the Raptors parade, right? Because <laughs> if if you were at the Raptors parade, like I you know yeah you know, like uh, you went to it, right? Did you go to it or yeah, I went. I okay, was so there. so I was so I went with my whole family. I went with like my sisters, brothers. I went. I even brought my my little one with me, like my daughter. And mm-hmm. I'll, I'll tell this story before we wrap up. But like, um, we weren't like I don't know where you were, but like when the when the players hit the stage, right, with the trophy and everything else, right, when they finally mm-hmm. got to the stage. We weren't in that crowd by Nathan Phillips Square, but you know the you know the, you know the street beside, right beside it, like, yeah, like right beside the courthouse. So we were we were there, right. So I remember as as Kawhi hit the stage, right. Mm-hmm. As Kawhi finally hit the stage, and we're watching this on the screen. We couldn't even see the stage at this point. We're just watching this off like the jumbo screen. It's a good shot of the jumbo screen. I remember as soon as he hit the stage, my daughter turned to me at that point and said, Daddy, I need to use a washroom. And I'm like, oh, my God, are you, are you kidding me right now? Because like you, you, you remember how, how, how packed, how yeah. densely packed that was, right? Yeah. So, so I remember it took us and that walk from that point where we were like by the courthouse there to, to what? To Queen Street is mm-hmm. you want to say maybe like 20 minutes. No, sorry, not not twenty minutes. A like normal walk is probably like two minutes, three minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. It took us twenty minutes to get through that crowd. It See, took, I, I I knew that was going to happen, so like I was under the QEW, and I was like, I'm just, this is as far as I go. Yeah, yeah. I got to and, see everything up close, and I was like, I'm good. <laughs> and, and and honestly, if 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 I was to do it again, I would have done that. I would have went to the I would have went to the QEW mm-hmm. and watched watched the the um. Sorry, yeah, the like, actual parade. Yeah, the buses. But like, we I, I, I would have watched. Yeah, everybody. I would have. I would have watched the buses pass by, and I would have been good. And we would have went home. Yeah. Like, like if I could do, if I could do it again, I would have did that. But let me. I'll, I'll, I'll finish the story. So yeah, yeah. we get to Queen Street. Again, this took. This took just to just to siphon through the crowd. Took us twenty minutes, right? Mm-hmm. By the time we hooked right, got through that. Got to that that part there. By the time we hooked right, and walked underneath the the Sheridan, right. Mm-hmm. As soon as we got to the parking lot, we walked to the Sheridan. That's when the whole melee and the shootout and stuff happened, and, oh. and thousands of people were running. So, so it's one thing, like I said again. Unfortunately, we've been through these situations so so much times, but it's a whole other level when your kids with you. you yeah, I mean? and and uh, and yeah. I'm like, and I was so mad after everything because I'm like, yo, I don't want to, I don't want my 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 little girl to see that, like to experience that at that age. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like yo, I was I was pissed. And it was scary for her, right? But I'm like, mm-hmm. but I think about it. I think I was telling Kevin this the other day. But I'm like, can you imagine if that happened while I was trying to go through that crowd? Like, if oh, if, if, if if I waited five more minutes and said, "Nah, let's come on, hold it in for a few minutes," can you imagine if I said, "Okay, fine, we'll go ten minutes later," and you're walking through that crowd because what happened was, you know, every like hundreds and or thousands of people started running, and uh, like thousands of people started running up that street, like that same street. So. So if you're standing there, if you weren't paying attention, you would have got trampled. Yeah, well, right. For so, sure. so I'm like in that situation. I'm like, yo, that could have been that could have been way worse. You know what I mean? Like it's that could have been way worse than it turned out to be, right? But and I'm saying all and, and again, that was at a Raptors parade. That wasn't even like a concert. That was a Raptors parade. Like you're not thinking anything was gonna happen there, but it did. Right? Yeah, but like nobody's mad at the city. No one's blaming the Raptors for it. They're just like, ah, this is what happens in a right. city like this. Right. And 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 to the to the point that we we're talking earlier about being on stage, none of the players, nobody knew that was even happening. You couldn't see what was going on. Yeah, you you know couldn't what I mean? see anything. And that was in the daytime. Yeah. That was in the daytime with uh, like, you know, with, with barely a cloud in the sky. And they still couldn't see all that was happening over there. 
mm-hmm. you know so so that's what i mean like this this stuff is complicated right like I'm saying all this to say like this stuff is is comp it's not cut and dry. This is not black and white. This is this is this is complicated. There's a lot of gray in this situation as well. You know what I mean? To uh, in terms of shifting blame or what have you. Like it's there's a lot of gray and I don't know how you get the color right in this situation. How do you color correct this? I don't know. But it's it's gonna well, be unfortunately gonna be color is, unfortunately color's gonna play a role, Calvin. Well it already did play a role. It already did. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think the the only thing that can save the only other color that could save it, save the color problem is green, and if there's enough green to back, you know, the situation, fine. Again, I don't think this is Travis Scott's fault. If like entirely, I think that security would have something to do with it. I think that uh, communication has something to do with it, and the horde of people that trampled other people has more to do with it than the performer on stage. But yeah, you can't sure. blame, you can't blame, um, what they make up a name from Texas. Yeah. No, I want to travel to Texas at some point. You can't blame <laughs> a random concert goer because you don't know his name, but mm-hmm. you can blame someone that you know has money and you can get money out off of them or some sort of settlement. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That means more. That, that 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 that's a bigger that's a bigger fish to catch the bigger fish to land, and I oh, think that's sure. the first thing you're doing. Yeah. Anytime a situation like this is the most famous person is always the most at fault. Yeah, and just by and, 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 matter. And just by proxy, just due to the name. It's not even yeah. due to anything that it necessarily did. So like I said, this which t- is why they went after Drake and they went after Drake and Travis Scott. Drake has money. Travis Scott has money. Let's go get him. I burnt myself with coffee. Let me go after McDonald's. This is the thing that we've all grown up knowing. There's a risk at a concert that, you know, stuff could go awry. You could get hurt. We've always known that. But right. uh, we're we're in a different world now where people, people sue. <laughs> I think this is unfortunate for him. And the thing is, too, I was hoping that more concerts and more stuff was coming down the pipe and stuff can get back to normal, at least in some capacity. And this is a, this gonna derail a lot of things. It's gonna, it's gonna Funny hop, thing is, this is this this, this is normal. This is and was normal because this is the same thing that would have happened in any other situation. How soon can people go back to suing each other for their own, like for not for their own, but 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 for mistakes or something like that? How quickly can people come up? And now I think you have fifty thousand people trying to shoot their shot and get a Travis Scott's pocket. I mean, that's always been a thing, though, to try and come up by suing. That's always been a thing. Yeah. Well, you know what? Let's let's wrap this up here. But, fellas, thank you for, for having this conversation about Astroworld on our podcast, man, because uh, I think we all agree this is this is such a unique situation in this sense. I don't, I don't think I don't think this is going away. There's a lot of gray here. You know what I mean? I don't think this is going away anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. Yeah, it's a real shame. <laughs> It's a it's a real shame. I don't know where this goes from here, but um, but like I said, guys, thank you for for hopping on this, man. Man, it's, as always, it's been a pleasure. Oh, for sure, man. Thank, thank you. you for inviting me, man. Yeah, no doubt. Thank you for tuning into the Av Podcast, and special shout out goes out to Kevin W, my South Shore Ave family member, and DJ Keo for coming on to discuss Astro World and the after effects of everything that happened from the unfortunate results of the festival. That situation is going to get worse before it gets better. And let's see how much it changes how concerts are secured and what the, uh, the approach is to properly securing these concerts going forward. Last thing, though, I found out that the venue was more than big enough to hold the amount of people that was there. But they also said that possibly thousands of people snuck in too, breaking certain barriers as well, which may have caused some of the situation. I'm sure more will spill out from this story, but it's definitely a mess in all aspects. And condolences to the victims and their families as well, because, I mean, you know, who goes to a concert to, to possibly lose their life, right? It's a sad situation all around. Um, I appreciate everybody for continuing to support and tune into all the platforms that they listen to these shows on. Um, continue to rate, review, and subscribe to all of the shows. And check out my catalog from SouthShoreAve.com. Once again, that's SouthShoreAve.com. Uh, we'll be back next week with a new episode. Make sure you tune in for that. 
And check out my brother DJ Keo's YouTube page to catch his shows as well. Just type in DJ Keo to catch his episodes. All right, support a podcaster. <laughs> For DJ Keo and Kevin W., this is Kyle C. And you just tuned into our podcast on South Sheriff Radio. All right, until next week, we out. Have a great weekend. Peace.